How's it going, folks? I'm Matthew. This is the Morris Cards, and today we're going to be looking at the Treasure Series 8 by Chaos Tournaments. This was a 102 player online event that took place over the course of this weekend, and a lot of decks you might be surprised to see. I'm pretty excited to get into this one. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, subscribe. Let me know what deck list was your favorite. Again, there's some pretty cool ones here, and let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. Big shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. Reminder that there's new perks over there. On top of merch discounts and access to early videos, you can now also get patron submitted questions for the podcast for us to discuss, as well as patron submitted decks to talk about on this series over here when we do top 16 breakdowns. With all that being said, let's hop into it and look at the meta breakdown of this event. Looking to run a great CDH event? Having hosted over 100 successful tournaments, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With its intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle everything from decklist submission to player management in just a few clicks. Then, all players need to do is scan a generated QR code to have access to your full tournament bracket. Put your players first with seamless pairing software and real-time access to standings. Take the guesswork out of tournaments. Give Command Tower a try for your next event. In the short time I've been doing these videos, I've already got comments of like, oh, it's always blue farm, it's always blue farm, blah, blah, blah. Well, here we go. 15 blue farms, zero main top 16, 0% conversion rate, the most popular deck by a lot. Nine more entries in the next more po most popular deck. More than double anything here. Nothing, no conversion rate. I'm really interested in why that's the case. Could be that, uh, you know, none of the, the ball and blue farm pilots ran in here, or maybe this meta is just uh, not very friendly to blue farming. People really, really respect that, I don't know. Um, one Sisse made it through out of the six, one Kinnon out of the six, one Krom. It already is looking like we're probably gonna see a pretty diverse top 16 because a lot in the top 10 didn't even make it. And then on top of that, there's only one ups. To avoid spoilers, we're not gonna scroll down too far, but yeah, this event, a decent bit of Sisse, decent bit of Kinnon, notably not seeing Rogsai anywhere in the top 10 compared to like the last event we broke down, Top Deck Expo. Blue Farm was number one with Rogsai and Kinnon tied for two. Now we see Sisse take that spot and no Rogsai at all. Instead, we're seeing Krom Tevish in that Grixis slot. We have seen that deck piloted to a lot of success in the hands of like a kind of small number of pilots. So maybe more people are picking that up to see how they could do with it. But all right, with all that being said, let's hop into the top 16 deck list. I wanted to give a couple quick honorable mentions. We had not one, but two Rocco Cabaret Caterer decks very nearly make the cutoff for top 16. Uh, this is a deck that has kind of fallen off a bit recently. We were pretty high on it at the beginning of the year and it's just not seen a lot of results. Beyond a couple changes of new cars, we see like Boromir mirror showing up uh this list offering to do some perforos nonsense dauntless dismantler new cards showing up this is pretty similar to what the list has been doing has shown up here to uh more success than usual again not quite taking down the, the event but i just wanted to highlight that a couple roccos uh came pretty close i wanted to mention because we had another blues clues clue farm whatever you like to call it also get near here this one opting to do to fairy placer kitten stuff whole breaker horror we got Talion. this is a deck that if you watched the last video managed to snag a top four at a very big very competitive event and it's something you might want to keep your eyes on Ooh, blasphemous act here too that's cool this is a deck that does blue farm color things you still are breaching and thorkling and all that but then you also have access to uh infinite mana outlets in the command zone and yeah this might be a list to keep your keep your eyes on because uh it, it showed up here again not quite taking it down but uh i would not be surprised to see a lot more of these going forward all right in at number 16 we already have a pretty hot pick and that is with corvold fakers king getting a top 16 now if you watch the podcast you know my co-host eric is a huge corvold fan but this is not the kind of corvold list you might be used to this is quite different so so uh, we're seeing sack outlets like Carrion Feeder, kind of incremental value-y type cards that are just like good with Corvo, like synergistic cards, like uh, Greedy Freebooter here, Nested Shambler, cards that just make material for you to uh, sacrifice. Shambling Gas, kind of similar. Sylvan Safekeeper lets you sacrifice things on top of protecting things. Vistor Sea is another sack outlet. Bowmasters is just a generically good card that also makes a token that's easy to replace over and over. And then Chatterfang, this is a kind of hot one. Uh, usually don't see this outside of like the Pongo Najila list, but if you're making a bunch of tokens and you want more tokens to make and you have sack outlets, then it kind of makes sense to uh, do some Chatterfang nonsense. And he also, again, is a way to sack things and kill things which is really cool. Going deep on these effects. Street Wraith is interesting. I'm not entirely sure why that one's here, but I'm pretty sure this isn't a Nozlist, so that at least adds to some of it. Maybe it's a Doomsday pile. Let's see as we scroll down. No Doomsday. What the heck? Immediately disappointed. Street Wraith is an interesting one. I guess if you're not Nozzing, then it is just a way to have like 
one less card in your deck and then also synergizes really well with top deck cooters things like that i'm curious if there's more synergy here that i don't see because usually you only see street wraith in like the doomsday piles which this deck is not on on uh, the sorceries we have strike it rich which doesn't often show up but is one of those cards that gets mentioned as like this could be a gorbold card and it's fine the rest of these are just kind of what you'd expect minus the fact that there are no wheels here corrupted conviction this is like a village rights type effect malakir rebirth we doing some scamming um also pretty good if you're sacking things that you like to keep in play really go with like your dock side you can do this uh, with the corval trigger on the stack you know bring your dock side back pretty cool lots and lots of the kind of bad synergy cards for corval that a lot of players will dismiss as like well that's just too cutesy but it's just a really high density of them here to make sort of like almost a mid-range Corvold deck list. Porta Calling, not one you usually see uh, in the Nas list. Bolt Bend also, and Snuff Out, these four mana spells, and as well as this member. Lots of like kind of chunkier spells that don't really cost that much mana, but off your Nas they cost a lot and uh, usually don't make the cut and they get to show up here because we're not Nazim. In the artifact slots, we got some normal stuff up top. Prize Statue is a artifact that comes in, makes a treasure. When you sack it, it also makes a treasure. And then we have the two altars for more creature sacrifice synergy. So like really going in on almost like the casual Corval list type cards. Goblin Bombardment. Again, it's a sack outlet. It's removal. It does all kinds of things. If you get loops going, it lets you win. Solven Library. We're not Nazan. We're, we, you know, we don't care that much about our life total. Let's do it. Let's just draw however we can. I am almost a little surprised not to see the one ring if we're not nausing um and we are going for more of that grindy plan but maybe you're just sacrificing so much stuff you don't need it zombie infestation is a hot one if you have cards you know if you can keep sacking things especially if you have like chatter fang this is like get rid of two cards make two things corville can sack those or if you have sack outlet you sack those two things you get two more cards you can keep digging through your entire deck that's pretty cool and then 28 lands including cradle and emergent zone really interesting stuff ball pit if you need to get rid of a new if you need to get rid of a new what can i say i really like to see this one in action i'm gonna have to go back and watch some of the gameplay and just to see how this one actually runs and how it feels and how it looks because it is such a different list than which of like the treasure storm mad king whatever type of uh corval you might be used to so really cool list to start us off at 16. then we've got just another teamer pirates this is malcolm tana let's see if it is just exactly what you'd expect uh lots of the green sort of dorky creatures you'd expect so safekeeper keep our malcolm and our glinthorn safe tinderwall helps us get that stuff out corridor monitor are we are we birthing potting go down and double check we are and we're one ringing so we got glinthorn buccaneer to win with malcolm we've got the clone effects not running uh flesh duplicate opting to go fimage snapcast to mage uh this deck does cute little things like snapcaster one just to have backup and then you can also do like neoform lines where you can neoform from like one to grab your snapcaster at two and then snapcaster back to neoform bring it up glenhorn buccaneer at three bell's gonna keep your stuff safe a lot of the stuff you'd expect and then we're we're birthing potting and we're kiki jiki in you get to pod tana into kiki jiki or neoform it into kiki jiki you can also turn one of your three drops into it with no revolution and then it goes off with a card like order monitor so another way to win beyond just the glenhorn buccaneer lines both of the sorcery speed final fortune effects this isn't really like a mid-range list it's a pretty proactive almost like a tempo kind of list that's just trying to combo quickly i found these sort of final fortune effects are pretty nice to kind of sure up the weaknesses of like your awkward-ish tutors of like if I have to spell seeker for a creature tutor or I have to mystical tutor for a creature tutor like having to set up those weird little lines and then being able to just like do it behind a last chance wars oath or final fortune and then get to your thing and then more exciting we got bring the light this basically serves the purpose of if you spend all five colors of mana it lets you search up a five drop exile that card and then cast it this could be five mana go get glenhorn buccaneer put it into play that's basically like demonic tutor rate which is pretty nice can also so just go get your kiki jiki um bring to light a pretty flexible card we're only in teamer so a lot of our lands might not necessarily tap for bring to light colors but we're a dock side deck we are running things like city brass mana confluence ways to tap for those other mana birds of paradise stuff like that so you can get the five mana of course if you're doing glenhorn buccaneer you only need to tap for three colors and that lines up very well here and basically makes this like a demonic tutor that gets your glenhorn which is pretty nice brainstorm so we are doing a little bit of cantripping miscast and spell pierce veil again this is a pretty proactive list pretty standard stuff for the interaction suite artifact slots not a million artifacts 
Uh, they still somehow always have Malcolm on turn one. I don't, I don't get it. But and then again, we have the birthing pod, which has cool lines that you can do here. And then the one ring. This is a list that's gone up and down kind of in value or it stonks as it were as people sort of like pack more removal and unpack removal and you expect the turbo decks. You don't care as much about this. Then you're like, oh, I got got by the creature combo. So this is one that kind of fluctuates a lot in the meta based on what people are kind of trying to hate out. But it is just a really consistent list that when people bring it tends to show up and perform. Next, we're looking at Obnixilus the Kingpin. This is a cool one that performed really well this weekend. There were lots of Obnixiluses in the three different large events that took place over this weekend. This is a deck that people were kind of high on and at first didn't really have any results. You know, it just kind of had like good word of mouth and does spike some top 16s. But then yeah, this weekend just hit like four or five top 16s. Walking Ballista, spoiler alert, we're going to scroll down and we're probably going to see an Agatha Soul Cauldron and it's here. Uh, this turns your Obnixilus into a walking ballista what you can do is play the walking ballista it dies immediately whatever or it just gets in your graveyard at some point you can cast it from exile for free off obnixilis with agathas you're going to be able to activate exile it and then obnixilis will then be able to become a walking ballista he's going to have a million plus one plus one counters on him because that's just how he works and then when you remove a counter and ping somebody you're going to trigger obnixilis exile the top card of your library he's going to get a plus one plus one counter off of the one damage you did and then you can remove that counter and keep it going. As long as your library is higher than the life total of your opponents, you'll be able to do it. And also, once you get your entire deck, you can probably just figure out a line from there. So we're going to see like a decent amount of synergy cards that trigger Obnixilis. He's kind of like a scaling, Ristic study, Ishai, murder thing. And these cards just end up kind of being like their own source of card advantage. Cards like Disciple of the Vault are good. Opponents lose one life. Perfect. Cataract Parasite ends up being one of the better cards in this deck because people are drawing lots of cards. You're getting lots of triggers. You get cards off of their cards and you get a scaling threat on top of the damage already applying generically good cards like ragavan dothy dockside of course are here bow masters is insane in this deck because every time it triggers we get an op card uh we are doing dual caster so i'm guessing we're on twin flame and or heat shimmer to be able to have like a kind of clean win con mayhem devil here of course awesome shielder the apocalypse doesn't synergize with our uh obnixilis but it's just kind of a good enough card in these colors really punishes life total so we have like kind of hateful ish pieces here between like wandering archaic and shield we're in Rakdos, so we can make mana, so getting them out shouldn't be that difficult. Reanimate, just a good card, to be honest. More decks should probably be playing it. Uh, this is a Grape Shot, which is, again, phenomenal with Omnixilis. You get Storm of like five, and it's just like two mana draw five. It's freaking insane. Um, Yogg Will, we can do Stormy kind of stuff here. You can see with like the Jessica's Will. Sometimes you'll be like hitting cards off Omnixilis and casting them, even though you don't really want to, just to be able to get them in your graveyard so they're not exiled forever, because we're also, uh, I'm guessing, let's scroll down, but we're also an Underworld Breach deck. And as you saw a Yawgmoth spell deck so we can get some of those cards back in case you have like something really critical that goes into the into exile we don't want to lose forever i've been in so many pods where people wish they had a gut shot to kill the player one and here you actually have it and then also you get a card off of it with obnixilis fling that's a cute one well i mean your obnixilis is getting removed you could just kill a player just hit for 20 fling for 20 that's pretty awesome it's a dismember in phyrexian uh, lots of ways to interact and remove things uh we need to be able to remove things because draineth magistrate bodies this deck so freaking hard so every piece of removal you can cram in here that kills the draineth probably gonna want it in the deck uh lots of mana to get our ob out early since says divining top which ends up being a really good card in here and we also opted to run the citadel and aetherflux combo so we can top to kill our opponents with aetherflux reservoir and just go through our entire deck cloud sun cure lets us combo with a couple different things we could do dog side loops we could do mayhem devil stuff i'll be one you get this down with Omnixilis, the first time you trigger, it's going to start a loop and you will kill your opponents. This card is just like an A plus B with your commander. For the most part, you have to get the slightest hoop that you have to jump through. Yeah, Omnixilis. This is a deck I play against a lot uh, locally, although some of the lists can vary a lot. Really cool deck. Very powerful. If you haven't played it, maybe give it a try because it's really cool. You get so many cards and it's such a big beater. It's a pretty fun way to get to play a CDH. So we got Thada Adele. Talked about this in my uh, God of Commander video, Japanese tournament I covered usually these are dedicated to getting the one ring we'll see how hard this deck goes on that we got a tesseract the seeker which already makes it look like we're trying to get a specific artifact into play probably the one ring very light creature package flesh duplicate if you're in mono blue this is a better image displacer kitten works pretty well with the one ring if we're doing that kind of stuff subtlety just a card that i've been seeing more of lately and especially in low color blue decks free counter magic that hits creatures is not that easy to come by it's usually forcible a mind break trap all breaker horror we're probably going to be doing one ring loops to draw our deck we'll see and then con sphinx just a good blue card let's scroll down to the so we see extra turn stuff again this is looking pretty similar to the japanese list lorian revealed pretty just good lots of extra turn effects 
four of them right here. And let's see, we're doing, that's the twiddle thing. Twiddle itself, so we're tapping and untapping. Free interaction, see, so yeah, this is really similar to the uh, Japanese list they covered, uh, at least at a glance. Lots of ways to tutor up artifacts. Dramatic reversal, are we on Isochron Scepter? We are, that was a comment that I gotten recently about that last thought of Adele list, is if they're trying to do one ring stuff, why not just go ahead and do Iso Rev? Because Dramatic Reversal is just a fine enough card if you're doing one ring and lots of artifacts in general. You're basically then just adding Isochron Scepter, which isn't terrible. I mean, worst case scenario, like you can put a piece of interaction underneath it and then you really make people think differently. Like if you put a Mana Drain under it, it's pretty sick. But then yeah, having that ability to just straight up win is very nice as well. More in the artifact package. So we have lots of ways to tap and untap artifacts, ways to get it out. Cursed Totem doesn't affect our deck at all. Shuts down a lot of the green decks. Imposter Mech has just had its stocks really rise a lot higher with the printing of Orcish Bowmasters. Torpor Orb, Weather Rune Stone, lots of just hate pieces. These big mana artifacts that one Throne of Eldraine is just pretty good in any monocolor deck, but then also we're tapping and untapping and it can just be cracked. Unwinding Clock, again, lots of ways to tap and untap. Steel Enchantment, that's a very grindy tech piece to take somebody's Ristic or Mystic. A really cool one. Still want to give this one a try. If you're looking for a monocolor deck, give this one a shot because it's had multiple results pretty recently. Oh, I got to talk about Thrasby already. Newish Soul Tie list that takes advantage of having two cheap commanders. Yara doesn't really do anything, but we're doing Sultai and Thrasios over here. Let's see what we got. Orcish Bowmasters, good card. Sig River Cutthroat is one you don't see too often. I'm curious how often this tends to trigger. Its updated text is at the beginning of each end step. If an opponent lost three or more life this turn, you draw a card that can trigger off of, you know, shocking into a fetch. It can trigger off of just hitting us somebody. Lots of different ways this can trigger. I'm curious to see how many cards this will actually draw in a CDH game, but might be a decent enough amount. Weather Room Apprentice. So we're on the chain of small combo. Dosin. If you're in green, you should probably think about running Dosin. Pretty good. Grand Abolisher impression. Okay. So let's look at the sorcery slot. So again, we got that chain of small combo. We have Mnemonic Patrol, one of the best things you can run in Demir. Windfall. So opting to run one wheel effect. No time twister and that's probably because we have yogmas will to be able to take advantage of stuff in our graveyard beseech the mirror lines up well with cards like that as well as something like a calling ritual beseech into calling ritual is crazy calling ritual itself is crazy and we have a peer let's see if we're nausing we are nausing as well uh calling ritual and appearing the abyss is basically unbeatable especially if you can have a docent to sit behind <laughs> while you do it definitely have big ways to win the game big turns to make born upon a win just a cracked card nowadays are we on necro we are which i think a lot of decks probably should be uh, born upon wins good enough to run necropotence is 20 times better with a Born Upon Wind Up. This deck gets to really take advantage of Fierce and Deadly Relic having two very easy to cast commanders, especially uh, Miara. One in a black, that's nothing. You can sneeze out one in a black, easy cloud. So the only cards we see here that you might not expect, Summoner's Pact has a couple different de decent targets. It says Witherbloom, Elvis Spirit Guide, Docent. It can be a ritual if you have Elvis Spirit Guide. Docent is just irreplaceable in these colors. And then Witherbloom, combo piece. So there's not a million different targets you have here to get, but all the ones you have will matter. If you've ever played a Summoner's Pack deck with Elvish Spirit Guide, you know that that is a line that you're going to take at some point. Crop Rotation, Emergent Zone is pretty nice, and that's probably the main one. Can't really cradle very effectively. Uh, we do have like two soul lands, but looks like it's mainly for Emergent Zone. Nothing else in the end of the slot looking too wild. Let's see what we got in Artifact. Mox Amber, great Mox Amber deck. Defense Grid, doubling up on those sort of silence effects. Time Sieve is pretty cute. Now, I don't think we're looping Time Sieve. I guess we're just doing it with Artifacts. That's kind of a thought that I've had before of just like, take an extra turn with Time Sieve, just good enough. I mean, I don't see a way to loop with it. What card is this? Can probably do some really cool stuff with like Time Sieve, Yawgmoth's Will, being able to just play a bunch of artifacts tap them all down cast time sieve crack all the artifacts yogmas will bring them back that's probably pretty sick <laughs> relic of legends is interesting uh we do have a couple different legends we have uh in the deck most of our creatures are legends we are in the one ring this is definitely not a nas deck that is too preoccupied with its life total because again we have a couple four drops here a lot of three drops pure into the abyss of course which wasn't that uncommon not not, not too long ago to run pure and nas together in the same deck but uh nowadays we just seen so many peers get cut because of the fear of deflecting swap but if you can do it behind something like a docent defense grid then you know or granite bosher if you get access to that then it's pretty good the enchantment slot's pretty interesting we've got carpet wild growth as sources of mana again we're not doing any dorks still curious why such a low density of dorks but uh counterbalance doesn't scream counterbalance deck because it doesn't seem all that controlly but counterbalance is also kind of a granite bosher sometimes <laughs> i guess if you need it meaning like massacre is a cool one we're not on a lot of creatures this is a pretty efficient way to collectively get rid of cards that can mess with us um so that's cool Dolvin, Mystic, Mystic, kind of things you'd expect there. And again, the mana base, Besaju, the two um, soul lands we have access to in a 
emergent zone being like the main one that you don't always see. Vault of Whispers, I can only assume is here to be bargain fodder, right? Or time sieve. Usually the artifact lands are like strictly worse to run. But they do have some of those synergies. Pretty interesting deck. I know this is a pretty new brew by Kai. Glad to see it here. I like to see, this is another one I like to see play out and just see kind of like what does a soul tie deck that doesn't use any mana dorks kind of look like. Seems pretty cool. And it wouldn't be a top 16 coverage video if I wasn't talking about Wounded Satellite and Cannon. I mean, we're, we've covered, this is the third time I've covered the same deck, so we'll see here but again we got a bunch of mana dorks we've got flesh duplicate as an upgrade for the list still on the endurance uh glenelander still here any new big targets no i know he was saying the colossal sky turtle has seemed like a pretty fine addition to the list creature slot is the the same as since we last covered it it looks like a lot of the same kind of like big flip ish cards you would expect good cards that just kind of keep you in the game help you develop running just the two clone effects not going for fimage on top of these that makes sense i think got the force to figure which is good when it's good pretty standard stuff i'm probably not gonna have a lot to say about this list just because like Kennen is Kennen, and this specific Kennen you've probably seen before because Max just keeps getting tops with it. So in the last video, I talked about the Trinisphere and how I was curious about how it performed. And in the comments, he went in there and said this was like the most overperforming card that he had tested and that it was doing phenomenally. Definitely going to have to throw Trinisphere in my Kennen deck list. Again, be careful with stacking pieces if, if you don't know what you're doing. But yeah, I figured it would be good in Kennen and it sounds like it was actually very, very good in Kennen. Rest of our artifact slots. Of course, we got the Basalt. We have the Wondering Mystic Ristic. Still not opting to ground with the Sylvan Library. I would definitely check out the last video if you want a bit more of a detailed breakdown on the decks here. But I'm trying to keep it tight uh, for y'all at home. And this deck is just keeps showing up and it keeps being here. And I don't have a lot new to say about it, but uh, another good performance from Max. Try Trinisphere in your Kinnon list if you haven't tried it. it has cut the Karn, which I know he was high on, but I think Transfer is kind of taking that slot. So yeah, awesome performance yet again. We've got Sisse Weatherlight Captain. Wouldn't be a top six team without Sisse. We've got a lot of the Planeswalkers here that combo with the deck. Kiora, being able to like Bloom Tender, tap it, search, get Kiora, untap the Bloom Tender, tap it again, or with Cradle. Cradle has gotten way better in this deck because I'm assuming this list, like a lot of them are now on Agatha Soul Cauldron. Tyvar, one of the best additions to this deck this year as well. We are on the Flesh Duplicate. Katilda, not when you see that all that often. This makes all your dudes mana dorks. That lines up pretty well with a deck that is trying to get mana to activate Sisse. It is only on humans though, so of course it will hit Sisse. It itself having it, so it already being just like a two mana dork. You also get the cool ability. I don't know how often you're ever going to do this, but you can put a plus one plus one counter on all your creatures. And then, you know, if you've done some Agatha stuff, it's you know, all of a sudden, wham, bam, all my creatures are bloom tender. <laughs> That's where my bloom tender got bolted. Then you're popping off. If you get that going, that's pretty absurd. Eska, valuing the ability to turn all of your creatures into dorks. New additions to the list. We have Kite Cell Larshness. I got to talk about this a little bit last week. Can't search for this, but it gets to come in. For each player, you can turn one of their creatures or artifacts into a treasure. You can use it on, for yourself for whatever reason you need to do that. But then also you just get to get rid of problematic things like pop your oof over here, turn your one ring into a treasure. Really flexible card that I expect to see more of. The effect does end when card cell arsonist is removed, but it does have the word one. So that makes it at least a little bit tougher. And then Cutsel is a new grand abolisher that we can tutor for in this list as well. The ability to draw cards on it is relevant here. Sisse herself is buffed immediately if Cutsel in play and is going to be able to swing in to draw cards. Cutsel having that sort of like Timna effect on buffed creatures. And again, we have like lots of different ways to give your creatures like plus one plus one counters, things like that. So you will be able to draw cards off of this probably decently reasonably. Uh, and then also it's just another tutorable Grand Abolisher effect that doesn't have the sort of Teferi impact of, oh no, I can't win this turn. It doesn't make sense to tutor for it. So Volo, another way to tap and make a bunch of mana and you can tap it and untap it and it works pretty well. Urtai, removal and a counter spell you can tutor up. This deck just keeps getting better and better i really need to start playing more sissa it's so good finale and dt the only sorceries in the deck kind of wild legolas's quick reflex is not one you see that often can be like the best counter spell if they're trying to get rid of your thing there's nothing better but it's only good for that scenario so you have to consider that it can also be removal when that creature gets tapped for the rest of the turn it does get to uh, deal damage to a, a creature get lost again this is when we saw last week show up here it is really good in dockside combo decks like this that one, you can just boom, pop your roof, whatever. Pop a Draineth Opposition Agent, whatever's messing the stack up. Give your opponent two artifacts that they can't get rid of. 
until their turn. And plus they cost a mana to get rid of. Gaia's Cradle has become even more ridiculous in this deck with the printing of Agathas. A lot of times Cradle is just one and one and a half, maybe even two Sis activations on its own. Really has like shot up. It's already a good card in the deck and just like became an amazing card in the deck. And then Mount Doom is a way that we can combo. Really, really cool deck. You're going to keep seeing this one. It's not going anywhere. Now, this is one you maybe didn't expect to see. That is Ishai Kedis. It makes so much sense if you think about it. We were already doing, you know, for a while, you know, you'd seen Ishai Jessica, which is also in this list. And Kedis just like basically does the same thing, but without killing a player. It can either make it to where we're pressuring all three life totals at once, which is really nice, or we just kill all three players at once. If we get to do Kedis, Ishai, and then Jessica zero it, kill everybody all at once, which is really cool. So yeah, really pressuring the life totals. We'll see if that um, shows up here, how they tend to go. It looks like we are maybe going with a stack of your slant. So we've got Giver and Mother of Runes, protection for our murder machines. Saracen, of course, great way to pressure life totals. Dauntless Dismantler. This is a new one that I expected to see a little bit more of, but we haven't seen that much of yet. Um, kind of a Manglehorn, two mana, artifacts intertapped, and then you can pay XX white, destroy each artifact, mana value X. Pretty busted, pretty wild card. Aven Mind Sensor, Boromir card we're seeing a lot more of. No rule of law, kind of stacksy stuff here so far, but uh, just kind of hateful asymmetrical pieces that we're seeing. Savine's right, makes it look like we're breaching, kind of figured we would. Time Twister kind of makes it look like we're not breaching, but um, we have seen even breach decks opt to do that because one, Time Twister can clean up somebody else's graveyard that's got too much stuff in it, and then two, it's just the only other draw seven guaranteed that you have access access to on top of Wheel of Fortune. Seize the Day is an interesting one because this lets you get extra combats, which lines up very, very well with Kedis Ishai. We are just slamming into people. Just boom, you're out of the game. Teamer Battle Rage. We are really trying to get people dead. I love that. And then here's the Brain Freeze. Of course, we're breaching. Bolt Bend. Some, so kind of like some synergistic uh, interaction stuff. And then we got Savage Beating. Five mana. Cast only during your turn, only during combat. Creatures gain double strike or get an extra combat and you can entwine it. We're getting people dead with this deck. I love it. I love just the full raw beat down effect. We do have Torpor Orb, a little bit of a Nambo in our Dockside deck, but we're not like a Dockside combo deck. It's just Dockside is good for us. Gotta hate this art for the Wondering. Get rid of this border, just a travesty. Lots of different enchantment stuff. So we got Combat Research. This is one I've been seeing like ROG players talk about. Uh, it gives the enchanted creature when it does combat damage to a player, draw a card. And then it also, if it's legendary, gives it plus one, plus one and ward one. Makes your Ishai a little bit harder to remove. Makes it draw a card. Pretty good. Pretty pretty good for your mana. Curiosity. Again, we're smacking into people. Mine as well. Affidi and I are smacking into people. Mine as well. And then these work really well with Kedis too. Blind Obedience. Card we keep seeing in these sort of like semi hateful decks. So there's like a couple different directions the deck is going in. It's like a breach deck, but it also has like more stacks pieces than you might expect. It's also just a murder machine. I really like this deck. If you play Jessica Ishai, this seems like a really great direction to take it. You do lose the kind of like board clear ability that Jessica has, and then you gain just like get people dead ability. And then also like none of the sort of like weird decision making of like, oh, I don't want to kill this player with Jessica, but I really do want to get the value out of it. Instead, we're just splitting that damage up and just pressuring life those hit everybody for, you know, 10, 15. Boom, Nas sucks for everybody, but you have haven't killed, you know, two of the blue players and that are keeping the other people in check. Grab to move to Crombat on YouTube. Not sponsored, but I, that's just the name of it. I got to read it, I guess. We've got Ikra Crom. Uh, used to be a deck that you would see and it was just kind of held in relevance by it being on play to win a bunch, but maybe it's back. We'll see. I know these colors have a lot going for them nowadays. I believe this is looking like we're going a bit in this sort of like Sands White Storm Direction, we'll see. So we got the one wheel effect and then sort of the tutors and ritual-ish things you might expect. Calling Ritual we are on Pure, pretty cool. Lots of interaction, Flush Storm, Noxious Revival. That is so easy to read and tell what it does. Wow. Veil of Summer, again, makes it seem like we're slanting that way. Born Upon a Wind. I'm guessing this one's on Necro. We'll see as we get to it. Cabal Ritual. Yeah, lots of storming kind of stuff. We have the Fire Covenant. I'm kind of high on this card. Seems like it's doing pretty well right now. Nothing wild in the artifact slot. We do have Defense Grid. Again, if you're not in white, you should probably think about running Defense Grid. And then, yeah, we are on the Necro. We are breaching. So in the mana base, we do have the Emergent Zone. We are a crop rotation deck. We're not a Cradle deck. So crop rotation for Emergent Zone. So you have like three-ish payoffs with Necropotence. You have Crap rotation, grab emergent zone, final fortune, and then you have born upon a win. So like three ways to make your necropotence very, very, very busted. More of the sort of four color storm list. This one having at least one pretty good commander uh, in Krom. Yeah, this this archetype has shown up in like every top 16 coverage I've done of this sans white sort of stormy fast deck. 
uh, that isn't really too interested in grinding, but has the ability to just because the colors let you do that and just has like a bunch of different ways to win. I am bad for not playing Dockside. Agree. All right, we got a Traxa Grand Unifier, Teferi's here, Flesh Duplicate, and Fimage, both the two mana copier effects. We've got the Kinnon, which we kind of expected, Grand Abolisher. Newest edition, looks like we have the Cutsole, just another Grand Abolisher to have. I know some people were talking about, uh, what is it, Muriel, when that first came out, but I think the four mana ended up being not exactly what you want to do. So here having Grand Abolisher, Cutsole, Ranger Captain, on top of, I'm assuming, at least Silence. Lots of ways to lock out your opponent. These sort of effects are really nice right now. Miss Hall Griffin, because we are food chaining. We got the time twister and windfall. So both of the wheels that we're allowed access to, that's kind of interesting. We are on the beseech, even though we're in four colors. That one has been like an iffier slot in some of the decks. I was also, I was gonna mention earlier, maybe we have Orm's Chant and we do. So really highly valuing those silence effects with silence, Orm's Chant, Cutsel, Grand Abolisher, and Ranger Captain. I wonder if we're also on defense grid. That would just be like every single one that we can jam into the list. No defense grid, okay. A little bit let down. We do have the one ring and then a bunch of the fast mana and then like the talismans that you kind of expect um we're not nausing here so we're not that worried about nause into one ring mbt all these four and three drops in the world and then the enchantment slot we've got carpet of flowers again pretty good card i think right now touch the spirit realm blind obedience kind of like the three that we see in the tivet attracts a kind of whatever those high old kind of decks that are trying to slow things down and then we got the food chain of course which is part of our ways to win we're not cradling and we're not emergent zoning so nothing too wild in the mana base other than a cavern of souls atraxa one of those decks that just doesn't on paper seem like it would do that well in tournaments keeps doing that well in tournaments people doubt it but seems to be here to stay it's gotten new cards one bit of grixis representation here and that is on is comedian on tevish Krom. pretty interesting to see that not what we typically see from him got it to fifth place here tevish Krom, the grixis pilot tends to overperform it just isn't that popular um the only one we saw here so what do we got ragavan dothy so again we're already looking a little bit slower compared to like compared to rock side you're not seeing cards like ledger shredder certainly not talion kitten Hullbreaker. these cards make a lot more sense with tevish if in a more tevish focused plan of course, to make your Nas work a little bit worse to run, you know, a seven drop. Make sure commanders that are already pretty good, even better. Flash duplicate, great upgrade for Fimage. We're in a Bowmaster's world, get used to it. That's what makes this, I wonder how the Notion Thief performed, because it seems like Notion Thief might still be good enough. Like, good Lord, Bowmaster's just bodies it so hard. The only Italian so far we've seen in the 99. So we do have Mist of Lorien. This along with Gladriel's Dismissal are those removal spells that we got in the Lord of the Rings holiday booster nonsense that they did that seem really over the top and powerful and probably should see more testing. Did opt for Mr. Lorian here. Curious to see how that performed. Gladrill's Dismissal specifically, I kind of want to add as a anti stacks piece card that doesn't hard remove the stacks piece. So like, you know, you can do it on somebody's end step before your turn. And then, you know, the stacks player untaps after you and they get all their stuff back in case you don't go off. And we are on Beseech the Mirror, which makes sense. We're only in three colors. That makes sense. And there's a lot of good targets for it. Separate Denial just seems so iffy just off of Krom, but maybe it's good enough. Born Upon the Wind, it's busted. Final Fortune, great here. Mystic Reflection. Why are we on Mystic Reflection? Because our thralls can be dock sides. What more do you want in this world? Swan and Fierce, which are not at their best in a deck with two five mana commanders. But uh, Tevish is especially easy to cast. Turn one, turn two, Tevish is not unlikely. It's just a single black pip. We do have the defense grid as our silence effect. We got Curse Totem, which lines up pretty well here. It only shuts off like one or two of our little things. And then we are on the ring. We're also on top, which I guess is better when you're doing Displacer Kit nonsense and when you're doing Tevish nonsense to kind of decide what you're going to draw. And we're doing Counter Mount. So we're doing Counter Mount's top. This is the thing some of the Tevish Croms have done. It's not the most proactive thing you can do. Although, again, like I said earlier, sometimes it's a Grand Abolisher ish. And it's just another Another piece of junk to sell on the board to make people think about casting spells because in this format casting spells is bad for you tevish Krom making it of course great pilot behind it so it makes a lot of sense interesting to see some pilots try some new things here we also saw shauna who's known for niv mizzet playing thrasios Krom. so there was a good bit of switching up between some of the higher performing pilots that we usually see in these events all right we're looking at our top four and our top four is pretty wild so first we've got heliod the radiant dawn in the backside heliod the warped eclipse Heliod doesn't really do a lot on the front side uh gets an enchantment from your graveyard back to your hand which can be good you know your ristic mystic gets countered backside is pretty strong though you can cast spells as though they had flash and then spells you cast cost one less for each card your opponent to draw on this turn both of these are very in my water bottle both of these effects are very good in cdh your opponents are going to draw cards your spells you want them to be cast at instant speed anyways so this like 
you get the warp to cliffs in play it's really really good espers we got archivist and fairy mass brands to, and, and snapcaster to play at instant speed anyways good value cards in these azorius colors these are like the blue farm kind of sideline cards that can show up in any any given day in a blue farm list malevolent hermit is great interaction to throw on the board this is one of those things that nobody wants play anything after tim play kind of has the glenelindra effect and then uh from the back makes your spells uncounterable or non-creature ones at least so lots of like things you would expect and then hole breaker horror i wonder if we have like a hole breaker horror align with our commander doesn't look like it we'll see what the whole breaker horror stuff ends up doing because we got whole breaker and kitten so again we got the mist of lorian we got prosperity that's a heliod card if i've ever seen it make our player so basically make your spells cost like nothing uh, so i guess that's kind of the synergy right of all breaker horror get it reduced down to like zero with heliod and it's insane or you know two blue same with like metamorph and kitten begin to make our spells a lot cheaper when our opponent's draw cards and that lines up pretty well with things like lorian revealed echo veons i guess these have a little bit more synergy i'm gonna say if you're gonna do it let's just go all in and play time spiral yeah so like a bunch of cards that are like kind of good enough here anyways like lorian revealed and this low color deck is good echo of eons i wouldn't say is good i don't think we're if, we're if we got led at least it has that flashback thing you can do but be able to go in step echo of eons for two blue now that's pretty good and then also these cards all feed into each other so every time you wheel all your cards cost less you can keep doing more and more and your opponents are only going to have so much free interaction and you're going to get to sit behind you know potentially your uh well there's no grand abolisher actually i guess i should have noted that there's no grand abolisher only the ranger captain I think that's wrong i know some decks do it because they're like i don't want to look scary you don't not play Ristic study because you don't want to look scary come on now maybe there's a different reason but he, that is a reason i've heard and i think that's a terrible reason but they're in the top four i don't know maybe they got the secret sauce we have dramatic reversal we might be iso revving even though again we don't our commander doesn't really do anything with that but capsize here we go now if we can reduce our cards by a bunch we can really go off capsize is a good thing to do with infinite mana gets to bounce all of your opponent's stuff to into their hand even including their lands uh so nobody has anything even the score is pretty cute four is a lot if people haven't wheeled again and this deck we're running pretty much every wheel effect we can intuition uh do we have a good intuition pile i know having things like our malevolent hermit does add to it i'll have to piece it together we have echo beyond this lets you cast from the graveyard oh it does so it doesn't care where you cast them from that's interesting so like for two blue you can intuition if somebody's drawn two cards not a high bar to clear at all uh so that's pretty cool and be able to cast these things from the graveyard that's pretty interesting paradoxical outcome also really good if you can reduce it let's draw a bunch of cards that's only one-sided the more i see the draw sevens though the more it feels like you would also want grand abolisher on top of the teferi and the ranger captain and the silence and stuff i don't know interesting so we got manifold keys so we're tapping and untapping making things unblockable maybe even foster mech again it's pretty good sonic screwdriver this is a new one three mana tap for any color one tap untap target artifact two scry one three can't be blocked i'm guessing we're doing it for the tap and untap an artifact and we have some pretty big ones here. So Machine God's Effigy is a clone that is also a mana rock. We don't have any of the things that go. So like it can also just like win with Devoted Druid is where you might have seen it before. We don't have anything here that does that kind of stuff. Although the, it does line up with like the whole breaker horror of being able to get infinite ETBs. But we can tap and untap the One Ring, which is good. You can't do Memory Jar because that's a sacrifice effect, but is another wheel that we get. This has got to be like one of the better Memory Jar decks ever. You can flash it in for free and do it on end set. That's crazy. Throne of Eldrain, Coveted Jewel, Chromatic Orrery. So we have a bunch of ways to do this. Chromatic Orrery is a way to use our mana with like, again, we're doing the whole breaker, tap on tap, any kind of combo where we can make a bunch of infinite mana and keep playing that card, then we can use it to start drawing cards. Same with Coveted Jewel. So really cool artifact based combos we've got here. This is a really cool list that is not blue white stacks at all. It's, it's barely even blue white control. This is blue white jamming. We are jamming stuff. This is a really cool one. I like this. A lot of cool artifact combos. There's probably some combos and synergies that weren't immediately apparent to me. I'll let me know down below if you see something that I should have mentioned. Yeah, this this would be a dope one to try. Definitely give this one a shot if you're interested in these colors. All right, Krakashima is back, baby. We've been, I covered Krak Silas. This is my first time, I think, covering Krak Krakashima since I've been doing these. So let's see what we got. The deck got an upgrade in Flesh Duplicate. That's cool. Uh, DRC busted here. Dockside busted everywhere. Most of these are kind of the staples of the deck that were already staples. Texting Probe is our ad nauseum. We got Grape Shot as a way to win. Merchant Scroll Twin Flame. Nothing crazy here. Cantrips are a lot better in this deck. Now let's see if we're on the Brain Freeze Breach stuff. Are we? We are on Brain Freeze. I feel like this deck should just always be on. But like if you're just in, is it? Come on. What else are you gonna do? Is Dual Caster Twin Flame really that much better? And these cards actually have some card quality. Brain Freeze can be a relevant card. Underworld Breach. A 
especially is just what is the deck gonna have a better value breach than this turn scolding probably underplayed born upon a wind it's gotta be nuts when this deck doesn't born upon a wind it's gotta be nuts when you cast that card uh and then kind of the quark spell like the, all the free spells are just so much better with quark if you're not familiar with this deck the spend that's one we've seen a little bit more of recently uh i know we covered that in one of the other decks i talked about hard removal in blue here's our breach here's proof that we're breaching Ristic mystic good cards we got emergent zone so we are really valuing that uh ability to play at instant speed it's gotta be really hard to interact with Krog when it can just like keep doing sorceries at instant speed bouncing them back and forth that's gotta be really tough cool this is a deck again like this top four is not typical at all like Krog Sakashima hasn't been a consistent even top 16 level deck kind of this whole year uh the deck has really not performed that well recently and uh it has got some new toys and uh, I'm sure with a competent pilot top four like this is I mean clearly it's reasonable it happened here really cool to see and we're keeping the wild stuff going with Tevish Kodama tell me you ever tell me this top four pod you've never seen it before in your life there's no shot tevish kodama we're doing protean hulk stuff we have a lot of synergies here tevish lets us sack our hulk or whatever we need to sack kodama i mean if you're hulk piling you probably don't need the help but kodama also just puts things into play and it's just a great little synergistic card that can just get you a ton of value if he comes into play i'm not going to go too in depth on how the hulk pile works uh the cards that you see that you don't know the name of those are usually the ones that are in the hulk pile a lot of these will be overlapping and have different ways to do it we're mainly going to focus on the cards that aren't necessarily part of it or maybe Maybe part of enabling it. So we do have collector roof here. So we are hitting on artifact. Another Chatterfang in the 99. How many top 16s have two decks with Chatterfangs in the 99? And they're not Najila. Pretty cool. It's been off a draw card. Die this turn. Okay, that's interesting. That lines up pretty well with our Tevish stuff. I don't think that's part of a Hulk pile, but maybe we can do things at the end of that lots of things that are synergizing off of our stuff dying and then also we have lots of sack outlets yogmoth which is both a way to do a sacrifice stuff a way to combo and then also like you just get it in play can actually just mess up the board a decent amount hoarding broodlord that's hot i wonder if we're doing song house stuff let's look we are let's go baby all right let's see what we got reanimate of course makes sense here we're hulking out cut down for removal sacrifice is great with kodama and great with hulk lots of stuff you can do there entomb one of the better cards in this kind of archetype so we are on corpse stand and shallow grade to be able to do some uh, instant speed stuff. Deadly Relic seems tight in a deck with a five and a six mana commander, but I mean, if it's good, it's good. You get, again, like I mentioned before, so how many rituals do we have to get Tevish out? We have Dark Ritual. We're not going as deep as Cabal Ritual, but I'm assuming, yeah, we got Jewel Lotus. We have Mana Crypt. So actually a lot of artifact mana for a deck that is oofing, but maybe we're not, It's uh, we're not seeing like um, Null Rod also in here. So maybe we're not that high on the oof. We just like that as an option. It could line up really awkwardly to have oof in play and then Skull Clamp in hand with a whole bunch of Tevish trolls flying around. Like that's going to line up awkwardly. So being able to plan out your game plan around the oof, you'd probably just don't deploy it willy nilly unless you think it's gonna be good and death mantle is a cool little combo card that does stuff with all our sacrifice stuff we have a bunch of ways to sacrifice things we have the one ring lots of cool stuff and we got defense grid again showing up in not just the grixis list showing up in anything that doesn't have access to white and even some decks that do have access to white bunch of ways to get stuff in the grave we are necropotencing that's pretty cool the stonks on emergent zone have gone up so high recently this is a hulk deck i know the top four so this would be a time to point out that the top four had a little bit has some technical difficulties with player disconnecting a bunch that is of course going to impact the outcome come of the game but this top four was wild and really cool although i will say our number one isn't quite as spicy as two three and four this is still a really cool top 16 now let's look at our number one we've got tivid it can still win tournaments all right let's see what this one did different we got the teferi containment priest that seems if you've looked at you know that the top 16 hulk decks do not want to see something like a containment priest showing up dauntless dismantler the, and then we do have the talion kind of grindy stuff you might expect languish this is the control winter card uh, of of the month where i was just like my tivit gets to live and nothing else gets to live limb duels vault again we got the get lost so there's not really a synergy here we don't want our opponents to have more artifacts right uh one thing we can do i guess is get lost our own thing of course you can also just use this again like that that was an oof pod so like being able to use it on a collector roof is worth it but then also you can use this on your own thing to give you more artifacts to be able to time sieve with so that's cute going as deep as misdirection on the interaction mana drain delay so a lot of the like we're a control deck cards that you'll see get limb Duel's vault again. Probably underplayed. Probably underplayed card. Probably worth playing still. Graph Trigger Scage. One of the good things about Tivit is you don't care about this effect. We got the Imposter Mech, of course. Time Sieve to be able to combo. We are on the One Ring. 
as you might have seen, we are not nausing. Blanda Beans has become like a staple of Tivit at this point. Dress Down's interesting because you can't really win with it. it. Stops your Tivit's ability to do its thing. You can still do stuff with this in play. And sometimes you're just going to need to be able to do this. To, like it will stop win attempts and it will stop dock sides. That is like a weakness of Tivit is that you feed dock sides really, really hard. Though, yeah, this isn't one of those decks that can like dress down and win because like either you're Thoracling or you're Tivoting or you're just Blazer Kidding and none of that lines up with Dress Down. Really, really cool top 16. I know Tivit's not the most exciting. Look, I don't write the news. I just report it. Okay. The other decks were cool. All right. Give me that. This top 16 was pretty wild. There are not that many like super typical decks. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in this top 16. And even in the top four, like three of the top four decks are not decks at all. You would say like, yep, this is what the top four is going to look like. So a really cool event. Again, let me know down below if you like this video, uh, what you like, what you didn't like, what your favorite deck was. Thank you to all my patrons. Consider going over there, get some merch, get some discount. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Go play CDH.